This may look like a windy and choppy day out at sea here on our sailboat, but in fact, we are at anchor. We've only recently arrived here in Sardinia, and if you've been keeping up with our videos, you know that we stocked up on food as soon as we got here. And now, it's time to hide out from the mistral that's passing. Mistrals are strong northwesterly winds that blow from France towards the Med. It's definitely not fun for us out here during these times in the constant howling, gusting, spinning, and yanking around, but these guys are sure having fun. Welcome to Sailing Gypsy. Two years ago, we knew nothing about sailing, but took off from Canada with an urge for adventure. I'm Steph. This is Travis, and this is our home, Gypsy. We moved quickly and in a short time have made it down south and even crossed an ocean, but we still have a whole lot more of the world to see. Subscribe and join our life on the water. After five long days on board, we're happy to wake to silence. There's no more howling, there's no more white caps rushing by our hall, and we're up bright and early, ready for a change of scenery. And that's how you got to do it. You got to get here before nine in the morning when all the, the day boats haven't arrived yet. You can enjoy it before it gets smashed full of people. I'm just going to have some breakfast, do a little snorkel around, and I think I see some people walking over here. So we're definitely going to go check that out. We haven't really been to land too much. There hasn't been too many good spots to land the dinghy. And if it is, the anchorage is so crowded, I don't feel comfortable leaving the boat. So yeah, it's kind of different cruising. Still gonna say, we're the only Canadian boat we've seen so far. This is what Travis means. Come lunchtime, everyone's found their hangout spot for the day and we're surrounded 360 degrees. This is why we've spent most of our time on board hanging out above deck in Sardinia. We've mentioned the anchoring craziness in the past few episodes in the Med, and this powerboat ahead of us wasn't really anchored. He continually dragged several times, driving up, only to drag again until his guests were practically showering off on the bow of our boat. Come sunset, the day boats leave, and we finally have the opportunity to head up for that hike that Travis was eyeing. Now, if you don't head out early to miss rush hour, this is sort of what it looks like out there. Not so comfortable for us sailboats. This is our last stop in Sardinia. We've been here for a couple of days and we really haven't done much while here, but that's okay because we're heading out to somewhere really exciting. We're gonna be going across over to Rome. We're gonna pick up a marina. We're gonna be med mooring for the first time and it should be a lot of fun. Hopefully on our way back, we can stop by Sardinia when it's a little less crowded and check out a couple of spots a little more peacefully. If you've watched our recent short here on YouTube, we did try to put our Snapdavid patch back on the dinghy and we haven't tested it out yet. We thought we were gonna flip it on the back for this sail, but we're gonna be pulling into a marina, which means it'll be our first time med mooring and we're likely gonna go in backwards, reverse in. So we wanna have visibility and be able to walk off the back of the boat. Nervous about med mooring? Oops, got no, it. Why is there no wind? <laughs> He's got it. We don't have enough buoys, or we don't have enough fenders, but I think we'll be okay. We've got crazy calm conditions. It's almost like glass out here. Look at that. Well, as you can tell, it is super comfortable. Bummer is we're not sailing, but sometimes that's the trade-off. Pretty much no sea state. 
part of the heel. That right there, folks, is champagne sailing for sure. Now we're doing five seven. Oh man. What do you get? Well, we will, yeah, we, I wasn't expecting to do that. I was expecting maybe we'd go three and a half, it's four been knots. Like two minutes. <laughs> yeah, I know, but the winds have slowly. Five nine. The, yeah, the holy crap. Five nine and seven. There must be a current with us. That land that I just showed you right there, that is Corsica, which is pretty much almost 70 nautical miles away. It is so well lit, it looks like it's only 20 miles away. That's wild. And it's not even like clear, there's like a haze too. That's so neat. I've never seen land that far away, that like clear. motored all night. We had all of 1.4 knots of wind, so no wind, very calm, comfortable, just a little bit loud. But now we are into the morning and we are just approaching behind me the marina here. Just hailing them now. And we have a booking for morning. We haven't decided if we're going to bow in or stern in. If we bow in, we might get a little more privacy. I'm not sure. See how dead it is? We want it to be as calm, windless, waveless as possible. Travis did a great job. I'm like sweating right now. There is no wind, no air, but that made for ideal conditions to be backing in. So obviously we went stern two, which was really easy because we have those two steps. So I was able to throw our lines to the gentleman at the dock to help us out. It was nice and close. And then uh, we didn't have to use our own anchor because they had the slime line. So they passed me the slime line. I just took the boat hook and dragged it across. I just didn't realize that there was like a really, really thick end at the end to pull up so when they were like pull 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 I was pulling up on like the wrong side on the skinny end but there was a lady across the way that was like no no pull up on the other end like that was in the water so I pulled and there was this really thick end and yeah we got all sorted but yeah that was our first time men mooring and I guess we couldn't leave the med without actually med mooring so yay we did it great job backing in thanks were you nervous well, I knew there's no wind, so it's like... Cool as a cucumber. Not cool. It was more like getting everything sorted. We got it. So the only thing... Right now, obviously, we're good, but I don't know how this moves with wind. Like, I don't know if, if we're going to, like, stretch to the dock and back. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if, you, if you're away from the boat and all of a sudden the wind picks up this way and we don't know that, oh, those lines stretched. Now we're destroying the back of our boat. So we don't have a gangway. It looks like they have boards for people to borrow on the dock here. Not gonna buy a gangway for all of the one time we're probably gonna be men mooring. We barely have enough fenders. <laughs> Anchor life, that's how we do it. We are up super early. Early for us, that's for sure. Yeah, we've got a long commute ahead of us for a big day of walking in Rome. I had to take a couple of buses and trains and all that, and it's like three hours. So I tried to get ahead of it as much as we could. Yeah, got our walking shoes on. Shoes for the first time. Today's gonna be so hot in the feet, but hopefully a better decision. We're heading out so early that the marina hadn't even opened its gates yet. Dude, don't go there. Tons of duck there. Just slide down this thing.
Once we got into the city, we stumbled upon one of the most famous fountains in the world, Trevi Fountain. Because we were there so early, we managed to snag a view right in front of it. People often throw coins over their shoulder making a wish, and it's estimated that an average of almost 3,400 euros are thrown into the fountain each day. That's about 1.25 million euros per year. St. Peter's Basilica is located within Vatican City and is the Catholic Church's holiest site. Its construction dates back to 1506 and it wasn't completed until 120 years later. Inside the basilica, it can accommodate 20,000 people and it's the largest church in the world. The Dome of St. Peter's was designed by Michelangelo and stands at 136 meters high or 447 feet. The level of detail inside is unbelievable. You could literally find something to admire within every square inch, so it's no surprise that it's regarded as the greatest building, architecturally, of its age. That was successful. We only ended up having to wait 25 minutes or so, so it wasn't bad at all. His mouth is full because we're having pizza. It's starving. We woke up, what, five this morning? Yeah, we woke up pretty early, and it is about 12 now, so it's pizza time, and we love pizza, so it's perfect that we're here. Yeah, I'm definitely glad we got to go into that place. It's just the most grandest building I've ever been into. Like, the photos, the people are like this big. It's just really cool. And we were reading that it could be up to like a three hour wait. We ended up waiting 25 minutes, which is not bad. The line did get a little bit longer on our way out. The sun was definitely a lot hotter, so I'm not want to be waiting out in that sun at that time. Early, early morning is the best time to go. Yeah. And we ended off um, actually going downstairs. You could visit the tombs of the previous popes. That was really cool, but there was no videos, no photos, anything like that in there because it's a sacred place. But that was really neat to experience. All of that was just super cool. It's just so insane. <laughs> so grand. <laughs> so grand. Did you get good pictures? I think I got some really sweet photos with very artistic wide angle photos. Show you right there. Right there. And right there, and there. <laughs> okay, it's time for pizza. We've shared some additional tips and recs for visiting Rome over on our Patreon page. We post exclusive content over there specifically for our patrons, and we'll put a link in the description box that'll take you over there. Mid-afternoon and the lines are long and the sun is hot. We can thank the ancient Romans and the aqueducts they built. It was nice to know that they had 2,500 of these drinking fountains, called Nassoni, scattered throughout the city. We refilled our bottles countless times. We also visited the Palantino, or Palatine Hill, and the ancient Forum ruins, which were really cool to walk through. This area was the center of day-to-day -day life, and impressive is an understatement when it comes to describing the architecture. We can only imagine what it looked like back in all its glory. Just east of the Roman Forum is the Colosseum. In the center of the city, and made of travertine limestone, volcanic rock, and concrete, the largest amphitheater ever built and still the largest today. It could hold about 50 to 80,000 spectators. I think they're looking for food. How yeah, big they are. So, once you set that up, then we're gonna... Yeah, we're heading out now. We've had a great time in Rome. Our feet are so unbelievably sore from two long days of walking. It was amazing. And now we're heading off the dock here. And we're lucky because the boat on our port side just left this morning. So we just have the one other neighbor there. Uh, but we have a lot more room to leave. Thanks for joining us for yet another memorable adventure. Be sure to check out the Gypsy Swag Shop to show your support by rocking our gear. 
The link to the store and all our other info is available in the description box below. You can also support our channel by hitting the subscribe button. It helps us out big time, as does sharing our videos. We've got a pretty exciting sale out of here, so hit that notification bell so YouTube lets you know when our next video comes out. Cheers!